This evening's topic is a relevant topic. It's a topic that we would not like to discuss, but again, it's the fact of life. We will be talking on the surging trend and effective containment of COVID-19 in the northeastern region. We have the following panelists. Uh, in our studios here, we have Dr. M. Marbanyan. She's a state surveillance officer, Shillong. Welcome to the studios. Uh, we'll also be joined by Dr. Nian Kikon, the state nodal officer, integrated disease surveillance program from Kohima. Dr. Stapana Sharma, assistant Professor, Department of Community Medicine, GMC Guwahati, and Dr. Subrata Bedia, Professor and Head of Department, Community Medicine, Agartala Medical College. Welcome to the studios. First and foremost, we are talking about this burning topic about COVID-19. It's an a pandemic which has affected our lives, our thinking, whatever it is we wish we don't want to discuss. But however, we'll be talking about this kind of trend and effective containment, which the Northeast has been a role model. I'd just like to start for panelists here. They recently, the Union Minister, Mr. Jitendra Singh, he said that the entire Northeastern region has emerged as a model of coronavirus management. He has praised the entire Northeastern region and said, we are a role models. Uh, good evening. Can you hear us, Dr. Thapna Sharma? Hello. Good evening. Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Okay, you can hear us. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Okay. Yes. What is your opening remarks and your opinion on this statement from the Union Minister? Okay. Thank you and congratulations actually to the whole of Northeast for being able to, if not contain, if not stop the pandemic, but at least contain it from going into further devastation. In Assam, I would like to speak on Assam and okay. especially in the last uh, one month, we have seen an upsurge of cases. Maybe being a pandemic, maybe we have reached almost the peak of this pandemic in okay. the okay. Northeast. And uh, we have seen that almost every day we are getting at least 500 plus cases almost in Gohari. But proper steps have been taken because the whole government was actually ready for this okay. because we knew this day would one day come. Okay. And all the steps have been proper steps have been taken. And yes, we are all ready. And I know Assam is bearing the brunt of all this, it's a big challenge for the state of Assam. I know there is a spike in cases. Can you tell us a bit how much is this containment a success when it comes to resources, the people that you put in for such things to meet the requirements to contain the coronavirus? So yes, in the last few days especially, we have seen the highest number of cases per day, single day cases, which comes to around 500 plus in Gohati itself. Okay. Sometimes we get it 530, sometimes we get it 528. Even to these days, Fortunately, we have a very uh, well-organized uh, district administration team. And uh, the, I mean, from the administration side, even the police personnel and the health, they have all been working together as a team now. And uh, especially since the day before yesterday, we have in Gohati itself, we have where we have the highest number of cases now, almost every day getting 500 plus. Okay. So in the Gohati itself now, uh, we have divided the whole of the city into zones, zonals. Mm -hmm. We have six zones now. Under these zones, we have divided the 31 recognized ward, the 31 in number and this 31 ward are under each of these six zones mm -hmm. divided okay. and each of these zones, each, each of these ward has a COVID care center which is one of its type in the whole country. Okay. In fact, we are turning out as a role model. If this is successful, then we yeah. can be set as an example okay. because each ward will have one COVID care center with a dedicated team for that center itself comprising of an assisting officer who can be of any background, whether it's from it's an engineer or from a not, he might not be a medical background itself. And mm -hmm. we have a medical team from there. This medical team comprises of especially a medical officer, an MBBS medical officer, and also uh, help from medical, I mean medical students. We even have two medical students in each ward and eight semester students, final mm -hmm. year students. And we have two interns. Along with that, they have a, a dedicated lab team this team is responsible for that ward. Any positive cases that comes, uh, we do the possible contact tracing in that area and this team will go and collect samples. So we are acting fast, in, you can say. Uh, I just want to brief the panelists here because Dr. Subrata Vedia uh, from Agartala, I think he can hear us. Uh, anytime you want to come in, you can come. I'll just go to Shillong here to Dr. M. Marbanyang. Your opening remarks when we're talking about the effective uh, containment of of uh, COVID here in the state of Meghalaya. 
Uh, yes, actually in Meghalaya, uh, when we had the positive cases, so the first thing we did was that we had formed the state uh, response team at the state level, wherein the commissioner and secretary was the chairman, and also the director of health services was the co-chairman, mm -hmm. wherein we have, uh, you know, many units out there. We have the surveillance unit, then we have the logistics management unit, then we have the infrastructure unit, then we have the psychosocial unit, and we have the, also the IEC unit. Mm -hmm. and other units as well. We have meetings every alternate days and also the proactive participation Mm -hmm. of the Commissioner and Secretary and also the Mission Director of NHM whereby we have every alternate days the video conference with the respective Deputy Commissioners. Okay. So at the district level they have a COVID management committees wherein these committees they look after the welfare of the districts. So even at the state level also we have this state response team as, as I had mentioned. And the most important thing is that those returnees who had come from you know, affected states, all of them have to register online to Megalaya Online and Corona app. We have checkpoints at every district. The main checkpoints is in the three entry points, that is in uh, Reboy District, and then East uh, Jaintia Hills District, and also in the uh, North Garo Hills District. So all these returnees, they are being tested and they are being quarantined. So we do not leave out any returnee, so without testing them or without quarantining them. So when the re results are negative, then only we ask them to go to their homes for home quarantine. So this is basically one aspect. We do not have any community transmission. Just recently also, we had formed the Behavior Management Committee, wherein the, this Behavior Change uh, Communication Committee is being set up at the state level, wherein the, we ask government officials them to come for the trainings, and also which will percolate down right up to the district levels. Okay. So the Behavior Change Committee mainly is stressed on the importance of the health protocols like the hand hygiene, washing of hands frequently with soap and water, and wearing of masks and also cuff etiquette. Okay, so doctor, wherein we uh, want to give, yeah, we I'll want just, every just, individual to be trained on this. Okay, we are joined now from Agartala uh, by Dr. Yes. Subrata. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Okay, thank you so much for being uh, part of this program. Uh, we are talking about uh, Northeast being a role model for other states in India in con effective containment of COVID-19. And how far is your state doing this job? Because I know we are doing well as a team as the eighth sister state, I mean, Agatala, what are the mechanisms that we have taken to? Actually, we have started this all activity very early, uh, starting the training, sensitization of the medical officer in the month of February. Then we had uh, different types of committee. Then the most important thing is that the surveillance has been taken care of. People, when they are coming by the flights and by the train, initially it was five is to one. Later on, it has been decided that everybody will be tested and so far uh, in our state 68,000 tests has been done and almost 50,000 population has been screened and another most important thing is that community uh, care center, the COVID care center, CCC, mm -hmm. okay. which is all established almost in all eight districts. Another good initiative from our chief minister that is the community care center. Mm -hmm. In the community, they established these quarantine centers. So the community is taking part of these quarantine centers so that people, those who are coming from outside, those who are test negative, suspect case, they are keeping in the, in the community quarantine for 14 days. And simultaneously, surveillance is going on. A surveillance, hospital-based surveillance and community-based surveillance. What we tell is uh, Sari surveillance or ILA surveillance. Doctor, I'll just pause for a while. We'll just go to Kohima, Dr. Nian Kikon. Good evening. Yes, good evening. Uh, welcome to the show. We are talking something very positive and optimistic that we are doing so well in the effective containment of COVID. And what is the scenario like in Kohima in Nagaland? Uh, well, actually, when the Honorable the Minister for Donor, Sri Dikinder Singh, had said that the Northeast is a model for yeah. the whole of the Northeast, we were also very comfortable in the fact that uh, we were following the, all the rules and regulations of the lockdown period. But then we also have had to consider, and I feel that I speak for all the states in the Northeast, we also had to consider the problems which all the people of our North Eastern states had problems and they had to come back. What I'm trying to make a point here is that till such time, we were very much COVID-free in most cases. 
Yes, but with the coming back of the returnees, we've been having a spike in cases in almost all our sister states. So this is a challenge for us, and it's a challenge which uh, we, what I would like to say is that it's not a challenge that we cannot overcome, but all measures have been taken by, I mean, I speak for Nagaland, and for Nagaland we are taking all measures that are within our control. Some things may not be with in our control, but uh, I'm sure that all the other states are also taking the measures that are within their control. So for Naglin also, we are also doing all measures that we can so that all the returnees are being tested and then uh, we are also see- seeing rise in case. I'll just get back to our panelist here in Shillong, Dr. M. Marbanyang. You know, I can't help but mention what the Union Minister, Mr. Jitendra Singh, said. And I quote, he says, By tradition and by lifestyle, people of the northeastern region are civilized and disciplined. That is why they could very easily follow the lockdown guidelines. There has been no problem in ensuring implementation of the lockdown-related guidelines there, unquote. Is it true because of our lifestyle and being disciplined? Because there are some uh, points that we'll be pondering upon uh, regarding the strong local institutions working with the government, you know, things like that. Yes, I agree with that because, uh, you see, our community is a close-knit community that way Mm -hmm. and uh, the ownership of the community, that is very important because when we talk about Meghalaya, we can see that every community in all the districts, they are taking active participation with the active participation of the community, uh, like we could keep all the the returnees, those who do not have enough spaces Mm -hmm. at their homes or few rooms at their homes, we could keep them at the community and the community also is very vigilant that way, in case they find any person, I mean, who is a stranger to them, they always inform the medical and health officer who in turn tests them. Because, for instance, we had a stray instance here and there just recently also. So we we really thank the community because due to the active participation and the intervention, we could test one person and bring him to the quarantine center. So, yes, I agree that our community is a close-knit community. I, I think for that matter, the whole of Northeast also will agree. Participation is very active. Uh, Dr. Nian Kikon, I think we share the same, I believe, the interest when we talk about the strong uh, grassroots level of communication and strong local institutions, and we know Kohima is one example. So when you implement such containments, I'm very sure there is some grassroots work that is done by the locals there to help Mm -hmm. the district administration and the health department. So here, I would like to make it very clear that all agencies of the government and also all the civil society organizations, faith-based organizations, and faith-based organizations, I don't just mean the Christians, all the faith-based organizations, and even down to the village level bodies, all have been collectively taking active participation in trying to make the effort towards containing the COVID-19 and the response to COVID-19 into an aspect where it can be contained and where we can fight the disease. So it's a collective responsibility and it's also a responsibility of not just the individual concerns of the returnees, but also of the people who are also in the state, who have not gone outside, but who have been in the state and have willingly and really welcomed all those people from our state who have been outside and okay. who have been in the lockdown for a long time. Okay. And they had their own difficulties. Okay, I'll just, I'll just go to Agartala. I'll just get back to you. Dr. Subrata, uh, we are talking yes. about this infrastructure, the kind of mentality that we are civilized, we are disciplined, and one factor is the local institution, the cooperation among ethnic groups. How far has this gone well in your state in this effective containment of COVID-19? I should say it has gone very well because uh, we have seen initially during this camp at uh, Dhalai district, BSF camp was affected. But But we did not get any single case outside the BSF campus. Then if you see the death rate is in our state is very negligible. And all the cases positive, those who are coming from outside, there is no local transmission. And everybody took a ownership of the total things that they have to, everybody decided that we have to prevent this infection. And everybody started practicing social distancing, mask use, hand use, what we tell as a social vaccine or behavioral vaccine. Yeah. So, and simultaneously government with the different media channels doing lot of IEC activity, even our 
ministers are speaking our health minister even chief minister is speaking in a different occasions okay so the people took it as a challenge and everybody is that we'll definitely win that is the main pillar in the success in our state all department everybody has involved totally okay. is not that health department or police department other uh, the line departments is also involved dr sapna hello we are talking about these uh, different factors that uh, makes a good and uh, mechanism in controlling and containing the covid-19 one is the strong local institutions and i know assam is a transit point you have to deal with so many things i understand we respect that but there are issues like a strong local institution ethnic groups coming together and fighting how has this uh, gone well in assam things like taking ownership at the grassroots level to get people quarantined uh, so when we speak about the uh, uh, grassroots level workers uh, initially it was now it is becoming a, a bottom up system because we have the administration and no doubt but we have the grassroots level workers who are actually going house to house for if we get any cases suppose we come to know of any cases they go to their respective place and then they work uh, for the containment of that house earlier we used to contain the whole area but now with the rising number of cases we have started containing that own house itself okay. or if it's an apartment then maybe we'll contain that apartment or uh, maybe we'll contain that floor depending on which floor uh, we have a covid case and this is done by the grassroots level workers the ashas and the ans they mm. go to each house along with the mpws the mpws are also playing very important role and also the administration the district administration even the municipal corporation who are giving us immense support especially these days when during the lockdown days they are all going and helping us in those containment areas okay so uh, there is this uh, aspect about the mental preparedness of our people who are working right now now physically yes. you know yeah we may be very strong but mentally is there a way that the government of assam or your department is helping these covid volunteers to be mentally prepared because it's very exhaustive is very exhaustive so we have seen personally have seen the different phases in a covid warrior in this four months initially it the whole we were not actually ready for this pandemic yes and no one was ready and then suddenly it has come and at that time it was almost like a war like situation where but there was a, actually a bit of enthusiasm moreover the number of cases was very less maybe yes. one or two and then uh, it was in the whole of the health department out say on behalf of the health department mm-hmm. so they were i mean with one or two cases all around i mean it was quite of an adventure at that time frankly but suddenly with the increased number of cases and with the increasing number of days it is we are actually losing a substantial amount of health workers because mm. many of them are now themselves being exposed to the virus mm. and are in the quarantine mm. and sometimes but we with the remaining half that we have we cannot uh, get them uh, do the work extra work because there's a limitation we have set the limitation of 7 days work and 7 days quarantine so we cannot cross that limitation okay. and they have to be quarantined so when it comes to the mental health um, we have the department of psychiatry is the psychologist out there along with the psychiatric doctors who are taking out ad based programs also using the media social media mm-hmm. and also approaching the health workers one to one and uh, knowing about their health status but otherwise as a whole uh, there is no such program to work on the mental health of the health workers okay because we because we see this war is not ending soon right no, i mean not it's at a fact all. of life Yes, it's a yes. fact of we life. We have a long way okay. to go. Okay. Doctor, I'll get back to you. I'll just go to Dr. M. Arbanyang, a state surveillance officer here in Shillong. There are some critics. They say that in northeastern region because where the public health system or the public delivery system is not that good. We are not adequate the infrastructure. So it becomes imperative for you and me being a person from the village knowing the fact that corona is around so it's better for me to sit at home uh, do not go anywhere because there's no uh, health center around me is it a fact 
as your experience here in Shillong, considering the rural areas? Uh, yes, in some rural areas, because of the topography, and also it's very difficult for these people to reach up to the uh, districts where there are the uh, proper health facilities. But with the coming up of this COVID, I think we had increased, I mean, upgraded the infrastructure that way. So all the PHCs, CHCs are also well equipped with how, in case we, there is a search, mm-hmm. in case there is a search, and if they have to admit cases, they are also prepared. It is a challenge, I understand, but subsequently we are preparing. And uh, most of the districts, even the PACs, uh, the CACs also, they are well equipped so that in case, like if there are uh, cases, they can keep uh, COVID positive cases there. In case there is a surge, even these uh, persons affected with uh, COVID-19, they can be home isolated also. But uh, as of now, we have COVID hospitals. We have at the state, we have uh, seven uh, COVID dedicated hospitals mm. in the mostly in the East Khasi Hills District and also in the uh, West Garo Hills District. And also we have this uh, COVID dedicated health centers that is at the uh, PACs, CACs, and uh, also we <laughs> have the, the CATRI that is the Corona Care Centers. In these okay. Corona Care Centers, uh, we keep the suspected cases also there. As of now, we, we are taking advantage of this COVID. So the okay. infrastructure wise is upgraded that way. Okay, Dr. Subrata, do you agree yes. with this? Because the healthcare system in the Northeast is relatively weak. So Many villages, many uh, places don't have access to health care. So is it because of that there's less... No. Uh, Actually, in our state, mm-hmm. health service is very good. Okay. PSC, CSCs are all equipped with the manpower, the medical manpower. Then with this, we have a good surveillance system. And anything going wrong anywhere can be picked up very easily. So that strong background we do have, though we do not have any public health cadre, but the total system is working with this uh, IDSP surveillance system. And anything wrong can okay. be picked up from anywhere. Okay. From anywhere. So that is the one of the great advantage for our state. Okay. Uh, we'll now come to the slightly very wishful thinking. There is a news recently that uh, India is coming up with a vaccine by August 15th. Is yes. it a fact yeah, or a yeah. fiction? Uh, is this happening? This is in that, uh, Considering trial, the fact the enormous mountain that we are dealing with. Yeah. yeah. It is ICMR has signed with yeah. the Bharat Biotech. Yeah. And the first uh, trial will start from the 7th July. And 15th August is the deadline has been given. So let us see. Different companies are working in the India, outside India. So once the vaccine is there, so that at least we can prevent this old people people death. And moreover, uh, simultaneously the vaccine will not suffice. But we have to practice this our Social vaccine. Okay. Uh, and social washing, vaccine, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then keeping this uh, yeah. social distance, not to put hand in the face and mouth. Okay. Then using mask and all. Uh, Dr. Sapana, how, how realistic is this uh, vaccine that's coming up, considering the um, fact that we have oh, miles and miles to tide over this problem? Yes. Uh, so I agree with uh, 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 Dr. Subrata Bhagyap uh, from Tripura mm. that uh, the vaccine, we are very hopeful about the success of the vaccine and we in fact will be very proud if that gives us a success. Mm. But we cannot depend only on the vaccine uh, for any any pandemic that comes or any viral disease, there is a concept of herd immunity to be reached. We are just hopeful that this vaccine, we can get this herd immunity either by getting exposed or to the virus or getting a vaccine. Mm. So we just hope that if we get the vaccine by August and we are being able to get the maximum persons vaccinated, but as usual, uh, we have, uh, we, people should not have a very complacent attitude that the vaccine has now come and then we can at least uh, we can uh, let go of whatever measures we have been taking. Mm. Whatever measures have been given from day one, the simplest of all measures that have been given, mm. whether it's the wearing of a mask or uh, the hand sanitization, whether with uh, soap or water or with uh, sanitizers, or uh, whether you have maintaining the social distancing or physical distancing, mm. this has to be maintained for a long, long period because we are hopeful of the vaccine, but we are still not 100% sure. Okay. Dr. Marbanyang, I know some predictions are being made that we have to live with this virus, live accordingly, uh, you know, treat it as a normal flu, again with precautions that we have to take place. You know, we wish that this vaccine will, uh, you know, will be available, but I'm sure it's not that easy to get it, you know, considering the price and the population that, you know, the India has. So, 
and uh, the containment of COVID is happening, but more cases are spiking again and again and again. It's very difficult to control. What's your opinion on this uh, matter as we're talking on the vaccine? When it happens, suppose we get a hand on it. I am sure it's not an overnight miracle that everyone will be cured. Yes, I agree with my colleagues uh, from uh, Tripura and uh, Sam. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we would be happy uh, to see this vaccine. But I know, I understand, because as this this virus is evolving, no, so we do not know for sure. uh, It may mutate and we may get another strain of this virus. We are hopeful that uh, this vaccine will work. But as I had mentioned, this virus is uh, evolving. So maybe we have to observe all the protocols, that is the health protocols, all Mm. those precautionary measures like uh, hand washing frequently with soap and water, especially after touching the surfaces and then the cuff etiquette and wearing of masks and uh, and not spitting in public places. This is in Northeast, we are used to eating this betel nut and kwai as we (laughs) mentioned, as we say in so and uh, (laughs) everyone is used to spitting here and there. So I think uh, there should be a law enforced by the governments. Whoever breaks these rules, I mean there should be some penalty to it also because I think the most important thing is behavior change communication. Once we sensitize each and every citizen to follow these health advisories, I think we can break the chain of transmission. Dr. Nian Kikon, Yes, yes. We are speaking about this lifestyle that we have. Thanks to Corona, there is a mask. We don't spit in places where we, we normally do as Indians. That That's how we do it. But again, mask is the order of the day. Sanitizer is the order of the day. Don't you think so in the future? There has to be a kind of a mental preparedness for our children to know that from this year onwards, we have to live with it. So we should all be geared up because this is not going to disappear sooner. What is your yes. personal opinion? Uh, uh, I totally agree with your premise that uh, this is going to be the new normal. Wearing of masks, the behavioral changes, as explained by all my co panelists I agree with the, all of them. But at the same time, we are also have to take measures where we have to get back to our normal way of life, mm-hmm. not forgetting the precautions that we have to take care mm-hmm. while we go about getting back to our normal way of life. And at the same time, I wanted to say was have all the precautionary measures that is in place with us as we know of COVID-19 as of now. So this is what we have to disseminate to not only our children, Mm -hmm. our family members, our community and the public, but to each and every one of us. So it is basically going to be a collective fight and we all have to be in it together. Regarding Kohima and Nagaland, the fight against corona and containment, we know that it was very kind of surprised to see the spike in Kohima, whereas the first case in Nagaland was not that very, was very encouraging. Now, mm-hmm. I know that the returnees are coming. So yeah. it's very difficult for your volunteers to do the 24-7 work. So mm-hmm. is there kind of a morale boosting for these volunteers or some mental incentives for them? Because as we talked earlier, it's not easy. Yeah. The body may, but the mind may not. Yes. Yeah. So uh, here there are some points which I would like to make. One thing is that, uh, number one, is that the fatigue is a reality of the frontline workers. Mm-hmm. I would not only say for the healthcare workers, but mm-hmm. also of all the frontline workers. Fatigue is one thing where we have to also consider motivational levels and mm-hmm. also other means to negate the fatigue. Number two is that we also have to make sure that all the returnees and those people who are in quarantine, they also have to take the responsibility upon themselves. And also in our state, we have had a lot of people who have really worked with all their might and security and whatever they can uh, I'll just I'll just go to Agartala, Dr. Subrata Bedia. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, we are humans. There is a point where we just snap and we say we are tired. And we pay our respects to the doctors and the health workers, but end of the day, we are all humans. Now, to cope yeah. up with the pressure, I know the health department is doing well for the COVID-19 patients, but what about the volunteers, the doctors, the nurses? Is there a alternate arrangement for them to boost the morale or help them in overcoming those stress? Uh, this is uh, the government is planning for some incentives mm-hmm. and uh, basically people have taken this is our uh, responsibility being a healthcare personnel. Okay. And I have seen their lab technicians who are working, they are working almost 24-7. They do not take any rest, mm-hmm. they do not take any leave, continuously they are working 
okay keep the quality of the test the mm-hmm. testing mm-hmm. so that is one of the very important part see as we are telling the mask hand washing and all so it is preventing not only the covid but also other airborne infection like tuberculosis and also yeah. hand washing will reduce this all the water borne infection or food borne infection also it will reduce also. okay uh, ladies and gentlemen i know it's a very interesting discussion we're talking on and we wish that we would always end this uh, conversation on an optimistic note dr m marbanyang i know we're inching towards the close of the program your remarks on the future efforts of our state health workers in containment how prepared are we for the next two years because we know the search is still on and in our state these health care workers like the ashas and the anms uh, give recognition to their efforts and their hard work so that is we are supposed to do that okay uh, we're going to kohima i am very happy to be here on your show but uh, what i can say in one word is that let us fight together and we will win this fight this is just as we will come to it and humanity has overcome many battles of such sort and we will overcome one day uh this is a uh, what a good discussion and i think in future also if you organize this sort of program is very good and in the meantime at least we can know the different states what we are doing also so definitely it is a helpful for us and we all fight together and we definitely will win okay ladies and gentlemen i think uh we've come to the close of the discussion very fruitful thank you so much for your precious time dr m arbanyang dr nian kikon dr pana sharma dr subrata bedia we wish that we will come out strong that's the only resolution we have and we have to do it for the sake of our friends our relatives our close ones and yes make sure that you follow all protocols take care stay safe and yes i'd love to end this beautiful session by taking this uh, quote by kiran mazumdar show Ultimately the greatest lesson that covid-19 can teach humanity is that we are all in this together and we have to fight together so thank you so much from the northeast and service of all india radio shillong and of course this adalbert saying all good night and we would thank our engineers on duty mr ec shilla and s choudhury and this program is produced by j gante so thank you very much good night